What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to bring to you episode 2 in my new series On The Shelf, where I endeavour to give you some cool and creative ways when it comes to displaying your collection. At the moment, I'm currently in the process of reorganising my entire display, which I'm going to document in this series. And to kick it off, we're starting with my Spider-Verse collection, which spans across the top two shelves of the Modja case behind me here. Now we're gonna zoom in and take a closer look, but before we do, do us a favor. If you like my content, hit that like button, notification bell, and subscribe to the channel. And let's get to it. Okay guys, I wanted to give you a clear view from front on of what I'm seeing when I'm viewing the Modja case setup. The top two shelves consisting of 17 figures, 18 if you count Spider-Ham who's being held down by Venom, mixed with accessories and diorama bases to create my current Spider-Verse. My goal with this particular display was to create something more action-packed by blending in all these pieces together and show you the ways I try to fill the space I have in my collection. Moving forward, I will be rearranging all my shelves with the Infinity War and Endgame diorama displays next on the agenda and so on with the remaining shelves. But for today, as it stands, this is now my Spider-Verse display until the rest of the No Way Home figures and whatever new Spider-Man figures are released. Zooming in on the first shelf now, we have the classic suit Spidey with his diorama base battling Scorpion with both the film Miles and video game Miles battling Venom along with Gwen and Spider-Ham. Then as we move along we start blending into the Tom Holland verse figures with the tech suit Spidey running in to help Spider-Ham and Iron Man Mark 47 helping take on Venom also. Lastly I have the homemade suit Spidey as an in-between as he's technically on this shelf but leaping toward the next shelf in the next display. To give you some insight into the creation of this shelf, what I did was start with Venom. I knew I wanted him to be the centerpiece for everybody to be focusing on and then I just built off of that to create the rest. Starting with the classic suit Spider-Man. Now whilst I knew I was working with Venom being the centerpiece of this shelf, the first figure I actually posed up was this guy. I absolutely love this figure. For me, he can represent the classic Spidey, the video game Spidey and Peter B. Parker from the Spider-Verse. Not to mention I love this diorama base and in fact I have a whole video dedicated to posing this figure and base up on the channel so go check that out after this if you haven't seen it already. Now, I chose to go with this pose because I feel it starts the scene off nicely and also incorporates his Dio base with the villain accessory, which I feel is too nice not to use in your display. He sees Venom coming, but is also in the process of taking on Scorpion. For those curious, I feel this pose is a fairly safe one for Spidey and I don't see any issues if it's left long term. Moving on to Movie Miles, we have him swinging in, clutching his fist, coming right at Venom, ready to brawl. This figure is next level and truly a figure to make the argument for having two of due to all the amazing display options and looks he has, one of Hot Toys best for sure. To build out this scene I have his spray can sitting up the top there for fun and I'm using the diorama base that comes with the battling version of the upgraded suit from No Way Home. Now because of the waist grabber on this one it's looser than the one that comes with Miles so what I've done I chose to go with that because I wanted less pressure on the figure as it may be left for a long time in the display like this and this way he's more resting in there than being clamped. This is a fairly dynamic pose but because of the great materials used for this figure I do feel comfortable leaving him like this. Taking a look down below, we have video game Miles with his backpack on and Bodega Cat in tow. As if he's previously just dodged an attack and he's now arching and aiming back at the Venom tentacle that's coming around after him. I just picked up this figure and this is the first pose I've put him in which is pretty stressful on the material around his waist and I am mindful of that so depending how I feel after this video I may look at changing it up but we'll see. I have him low like this as visually when you look at the display as a whole he fills that gap where there would have been dead space otherwise. As he was the last figure I added when it came to how I posed him at that point of the scene that dictated how I displayed him and included him. Moving on to the centerpiece of this scene, Venom, our main villain on this shelf. 
This is the original Venom figure and I'm happy to report this figure is still in great condition. No issues, even though I've posed the hell out of it. Go check out my unboxing and review on this guy and you'll see some of the awesome things this figure can do. I can report he is balancing on his own, no stands, interacting with all the figures on this shelf as part of the story, not to mention literally holding up Gwen, tech suit Spidey whilst pinning down Spider-Ham. You'll see I have him coming at and reaching for classic suit Spidey and both Miles figures whilst battling Gwen, tech suit Spider-Ham and Iron Man on the end. Man, I love how the light bounces off this guy. He's such a great figure. Taking a look at Gwen here, we have her leaping up and weaving through the tentacles, taking a shot at Venom. She's a great figure for this. She's super light and can balance really well on the tentacles, which makes the look much cleaner and less cluttered, not needing a stand for her. Now, while she looks fairly dynamic, I can tell you that she's not really posed that dynamic. It's just the angle I have her. I chose to do that because I wanted to try and pull off a pose with her that wouldn't be too stressful on the suit left long term. Moving on to Tech Suit Spider here, we have him running in to try and help Spider-Ham who's being held down by Venom. One of the cool things about this pose is I'm actually able to balance Spidey on the one foot and the tentacle, and by doing so I don't need to use a stand to hold Spidey. And then another cool thing is he also helps weigh down Venom and help prevent him from tipping forward, so it serves a purpose for the scene too. This tech suit is one of my favorite designs for Spidey, and I also have the quarter scale version of this suit, which is a special one for me. I envision one day putting this figure into the iconic pose from Civil War where he snatches Cap's shield and leaving him in that as a set and forget long term pose. Taking a look at the Iron Man Mark 47, which I've brought into my Spider-Verse display because of his relationship with Spidey, and we have him interacting with one of Venom's tentacles, as if he's about to blast it in the face as it snakes up to him. I love Tony's appearance in Spider-Man Homecoming, and I love his relationship with Peter, so having him in this display somewhere was a must, and I thought no better suit to have in it than the suit he had for Homecoming. By having him in this pose, it plays visually with the story of the shelf and also helps hide the flight pole for the homemade suit behind him as well. Okay, last but not least to close out this first shelf, we have the homemade suit Spidey who's leaping into the next shelf. This figure is super fun to pose and moves really well. So well in fact, I wish all Spideys could move this freely without risk of damage. This pose is one I had for my last display and I decided to keep it for this as I thought it still worked for the look I'm going for with this display. I'm a big believer if a figure is super poseable like this guy with minimal risk of damage, I have to put it in a dynamic pose to see what can be done. And this pose, I just really enjoy it myself, especially from front on. Zooming out for a look at Shelf 2, which is my current Tom Holland verse, and we have 9, technically 10 figures counting the homemade suit visible on this shelf, along with multiple accessories and diorama bases to fill it out. For now, it's mainly a far from home display bleeding into the beginning of a no way home display. But as my collection grows with the remaining no way home figures still to be released, I know I'll have to make some big changes once I have all of them in hand. I think eventually these top two shelves will be my MCU Hollandverse spanning from Civil War through all these appearances to date and I'll end up moving the other Spider-Verse figures to another display area. Now, you may notice I have quite a few upgraded suit Spider-Man figures. Yes, it is one of my favourite suits, and yes, I am crazy, but I do have a method to my madness. Now let's zoom back in. Starting with the first of the three upgraded suit Spideys on this shelf, I have him in what I now call a set and forget or forever pose. And what that means, it's a figure I've got in an iconic pose that I love so much that I won't be changing. This is one of them. Now, I can't take credit for this pose as I was inspired by Anthony from the figure posing channel who was also inspired by a gentleman called Sean on Facebook who did this pose first. So shout out to you guys, I love this one. This is a pretty extreme pose to leave a Spider-Man figure in with this material, but as I have multiple of this iteration, this is a pose I'll be leaving this one in for the long haul. 
Moving on to the stealth suit Spidey, we have him leaping off the Molten Man diorama about to try and web up Mysterio. For this pose, I've tilted the dio base to balance on an uneven angle at the back of the cabinet to create this look. This allows me to have Spidey leaping like this whilst partially hiding the flight pole like he is safely. This is a fun piece from a great film and getting that dio base with him makes him even more cool to have. He's also another figure I think that can be put and left in dynamic poses without too much worry of long term damage. Now, onto the other two upgraded suit Spidey figures who are currently representing the illusion scene from Far From Home where Mysterio was tormenting Peter and having him fight himself. For this, Peter is the one without the mask and the illusion is the masked version attacking him. Now I will say this isn't the original idea as to why I have the extra copies of this figure but for the purpose of this display I think it works. My actual intention for getting multiple of this guy is I wanted a few copies of one of my favourite looks of Spidey just to have so I can create some iconic forever poses. Poses that will most likely damage the suit due to being left long term. But my end goal is to have a shelf of iconic epic dynamic Spidey poses on the shelf. Now, moving on to the centerpiece of this shelf, the villain of the shelf, the mysterious Mysterio. I've had him in this pose since my previous display and I just love it, so I decided to leave him in it and build the rest of the characters around him just like I did with Venom. I have him standing on a drone, wielding his influence with a ton of drones and illusion effects mixed in and through this shelf to have all of my spideys interacting with. I'm also using some wires that I've tucked into his back to create the illusion of his cape flowing in the wind. Mysterio really is a great figure and one day I wish to kit bash a Quentin Beck in a suit to use that head sculpt he comes with. Eventually I will and I'll have that in the display to accompany him. Taking a look at the battling suit version of Spider-Man who we have coming in and trying to take out Mysterio now. For his setup I have him stepping across a drone as it splashes into the water base which I stole from my Aquaman figure. Kinda like he's landed on it and pushing it down into the water, defeating it. I did this because I feel it helps enhance the pose and be a reminder of the final battle when Peter starts beating the illusion tech from the inside out above the water. Plus, it also works as the water illusion from the start of the film where Peter meets Mysterio. Display wise, visually I also like having the fire element on one side and the water element on the other. I think that works. Moving on to the Iron Spider. I have him interacting with the diorama base that comes with the integrated suit Spidey from No Way Home. I think he actually works with this base better than the integrated suit does to be honest and I loved his battle with Doc Ock in No Way Home so that's why I got him here. Pose wise he's a little dynamic with the torso twist bending the suit like that plus the bent right leg but overall not too risky I think. To avoid having a waist grabber gripping this suit, I avoid that by balancing him on his own by holding down the two tentacles and leaning into the base with both feet just slightly at the bottom. Overall, I'm really happy with this base and how you can pose figures up with it. Now, taking a look at the black and gold suit Spidey. We have him also interacting with the Dio base by having him dodge the goblin's bombs as he's about to blast someone with the magic he got from Doctor Strange. My goal for posing this guy into the display was all about how I could fit him in on the end of the shelf and have him interact with the Dio base. The way the bombs look coming around gave me the idea to have him down low dodging them somehow. Considering this is also a fairly safe pose for the suit and doesn't have too many crease points on it. He'll stay here for now until Electro comes to the collection then he'll be battling him in the display moving forward. Now lastly moving on to the last figure in the display number 17 Spider-Man integrated suit in a nice simple pose utilizing that sculpt with the lifted up mask which I quite like. For this I just wanted to have him in a simple pose to showcase him being stoic holding the box from No Way Home. Now that actually comes with the battling suit Spidey figure too just to be clear. I really like this guy and it's awesome to have his last tech inspired suit that he built mixed with the iron spider suit from Tony. It would have been cool to see him use those tech parts in the last battle and it makes me think maybe he was going to use them with this suit in the film originally and maybe those moments got cut somehow. But who knows. Either way it's awesome. And that's it guys and girls, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of On The Shelf, 
my current Spider-Verse display featuring 17 figures, multiple accessories and dioramas. I thank you all for tuning in and if you haven't already done so, do us a favour and hit that like button, notification bell and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on when new videos in this series go live. And if you want to support the channel a little more, consider taking a look at becoming a channel member and joining the Iron Legion. We have a closed Facebook group and do once a month live hangouts where we chat and pose up figures together for fun plus more. Lastly, we got reviews and unboxings, story styled posing showcases, display tips and tricks plus live streams including the rundown where we deep dive into film and TV. But for now guys, until next time, I'm out.